welcome back to the From the Terrace podcast. This week we are um, reviewing the game that happened a week ago. Um, About a week ago. Week ago. <laughs> <laughs> what even was that? <laughs> oh, I'm going to let Regan talk for a while. Because obviously he's always going to want to talk more, I would have thought, about the game. Uh, good game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, all right. It, no, it wasn't. No, no that's the thing. It really wasn't. It was one of the worst playoff finals. I one thing I'll say before, seriously, out of like, I know playoff finals obviously changed how teams play. The two of the most attacking teams in the league to have played a game out like that, it was terrible, wasn't it? It was, a, it was awful. But yeah, um, yeah, I think I'll start off. If I didn't, I didn't manage to watch the game live up until extra time, so I didn't didn't miss. Because I ended up skipping forward quite a few bits because, like you said, it was so boring. I went, oh, Fulham a pass around the back. Yeah, skip forward. There. Oh, we're in the half. And then pause. And then, oh, no, we've gone back to Rodak. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll go back there. But um, I, wouldn't, I would say we played well. But like you said, it wasn't – I know I shouldn't be too mad because we won the game. But it's, it wasn't an enjoyable game to watch for a, probably about 100 minutes. Because I, the thing is, though, I think you played the way... I think Fulham had to make it boring to win the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, I think, to be honest, I think Fulham played the game to perfection. Mm. Uh, obviously, played to perfection would have been winning it in the 90 minutes, all right. But, you, you see, like, even though I don't think you actually created really any chances until the goal went in... Um, you you kept the ball around the back a lot and were the better team in midfield as well. Um, Reed and Kenny, in all honesty, even though at Boston midfield, um, Norgard, I, I thought Norgard played really well for us. So like you were getting sort of a hold of the midfield, but you weren't actually getting through into the to, towards the defence really. Exactly. But Fulham were keep Fulham weren't rushing anything. They were keeping it simple, and I, I, I'm assuming. Like I'll be honest, I haven't looked, but Michael Hector must have had the most touches of the ball because he just had it the whole time. Yeah, surely. Um, yeah, but Fulham just kept kept it away from us, and if you keep it away from us, we can't cause you any threat, can we? So uh, I think you played the game to perfection, really, which made yeah, it we, boring. But we predicted a lot um, when we did our preview. We predicted what will happen, like quite well, actually, because we said the main thing for Fulham to win the game is that they got to be physical, and that wow, well, well, not really, not really up front because we we did predict Mitro would start, and obviously he didn't. But mm. especially in midfield, with probably the Scoon Joe Bryan man of the match, I think Josh Onoma, I think he was brilliant. Uh, the defence, obviously, we saw Michael Hector absolutely pocket Ollie Watkins and push him off the ball. Uh, um, I, I would be frank. I mean, obviously, he still played really well. I felt bad for Watkins in the final. I don't think it was so much that. He couldn't get a sniff because of Hector. I think he couldn't get a sniff because just no ad midfield just wasn't getting the ball to our front three half the time. True, yeah. But Hector obviously did play well as well. But I did feel a bit sorry for Watkins, really. Um, the person I was most disappointed with in the final, not uh, there's plenty of players who didn't play well. Ben Rama just didn't turn up. Like we said, I just think that we when when we did our preview, I said that I thought I should start over Christie because he's a defender and he, I think he did brilliantly mocking Ben Rama out of the game. And they were saying the whole game the commentators they're saying Adoy is clearly not moving past that halfway line. Adoy just stayed there and wouldn't let Ben Rama because if you give Ben Rama space to run into, then you're in trouble, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah. But Adoy just, Adoy just sat there and didn't let him move pretty much. Um, I was very disappointed for uh, from a Brentford point of view. I know he's I know he struggled recently, but I think um, in Buemo was one of the worst I've ever what worst performances I've ever seen in a player final. I mean, he was terrible. He was he was shocking, and but I'm never going to slate him because the guy's 20 years old. Um, the contribution he's made this season, his first season in English football, is ridiculous. Mm. And he's only been bad. Literally, the only bad performances he has dropped this season have been since the restart. And he had coronavirus. And I know it's been a while since then, but Thomas Frank says it still affects him in training now, but he doesn't feel 100% right. So hopefully the break allows him to get right. Um, but yeah, ever since the restart, and Boehm has been like that pretty much every game, to be honest, apart from the Swansea one. Um, 
So I wasn't really surprised by that. But because you got a lot of people were calling maybe a boy not to start, but for someone to have that much ability, it feels like you sort of have to, don't you? But like just in case they do turn, yeah, yeah. But, um, but you're right, and Boimer was poor. Um, I, I tell you what, I don't think the game was helped by. I mean, I know they're used to it now, the players. I don't think the game was helped by no fans. No. Come on, like every like in a playoff final, it's just like that ha- whole half of Wembley roars every time you go forward, doesn't it? And it's like yeah. suddenly the defenders panic, and suddenly the attackers go got a bit more like um, urgency about them. Mm. When you're the game was a bit of a training game, wasn't it? It was two teams it who, like it. even though yeah. Fulham were in control, it was two teams who didn't really want to lose rather than wanting to win, it felt like. Um, yeah, yeah, like you said, there wasn't really any urgency about the players going forward. No, not at all. When they, when they see there was a chance arising, like if there were fans there, they'd push forward where there was plenty of opportunities where the chance would go and they wouldn't try and find another route to go. They'd pass it back and just reset again. Mm. Um. Let, and let's let's be honest. Before Joe Bryan's goal, um, I thought that was just destined for nil-nil and penalties. In all honesty, um, right? Yeah, there was. There was no let's talk, let's talk, talk about the goal then. Um, I, people have been on about um, how Joe Bryan, I was like Scott Parker, planned it all or or something. There, there was I, a video that there was a video that surfaced of. Um, Joe Bryan talking to Scott Park before he took it, and he was pointing. Um, he was doing that to back post, but then he did that straight afterwards. I feel like he might have had something to do with it. But yeah, to be honest, I'm not questioning that Scott Parker before that free kick was taken probably went that keeper's off his nine a bit, try something. But there, I've heard rumblings of like, oh, before the game, Scott Parker was like planning all this stuff, and I'm like, no, I'm not having that. <laughs> I'm not having that. He, what Scott Parker did was good coaching. He saw that Ray was doing that and thought, right. Yeah have a go, just have one go. But all this, like, how it had been planned out for the whole game that they'd been hitting these free kicks back posts and suddenly they'll hit one front. It's a load of rubbish, isn't it? It is a load of back. Yeah, I'm not having that. But Brian had to st- still had to execute it and he did it brilliantly. Mm-hmm. Um, people have been, David Rare got a lot of, um, got slated a lot in the media for it. And to be honest, I don't listen to any of it. I, I, I hate, I hate all of the People at media are going, all oh, that David Ray, a bit of a dodgy keeper. Are you joking? The guy has literally like won us so many points this season. And mm. the club have come out and said, and although, yes, David Ray, really, you'd expect a keeper to save that. You shouldn't be getting beat in your post. The club came out and said, us as a coaching department agree, that is David's starting position on every free kick. So he had to stand there. People were saying he was too far over. They say that is where he stands. If he, so if he hadn't have stood there, and then it went in. The club would have said it's a mistake. But clearly, Ray, that's why Ray is so good at coming for crosses. He gets such an early starting position and he wins. Mm-hmm. But then it, you, you can't really account for someone doing something that good. Joe Bryan finish was perfect. Um, and although I, I understand it was technically a rare mistake, I think a lot of the slating he got was ridiculous. And actually, I've not seen one Brentford fan slate him. And that says a lot. Because Brentford fans can get toxic towards a player, especially if it's a playoff final but not one person's come out and blamed David Rare involved with the club um, but yeah that was a uh, it was when it went in it was just a bit of like that was it moment I think every Brentford fan knew that was it as soon as we went 1-0 down because like I say we do not go do well when we're 1-0 down because um, that was right on the verge of half time wasn't it, it? it yeah straight to half time after it went in and then I feel like when we came out the second half it was more of like the same with the beginning of the 90 minutes again, where sometimes you'd attack, but most of the time we kind of muscled you out, muscled you out of your attack. And then all it took was one long ball from Rodak at the other end, and then that was that was game I think, over. I think the second goal was a typical case of it wouldn't have happened unless we were just pressing everyone forward, would it? It was no, no chance, no. Sort of a breakaway, but um, still, Joe Bryan finished it really well, to be honest. Um, it was goal. weak foot. But yes, yeah, it was just killer. And, to be honest, it's sort of frustrating, but Joe Bryan got one back on Brentford because, let's be honest, I'd say for the five years I've been watching Championship football, Joe Bryan has had never played a good game against Brentford. I've seen him get ripped apart every single time, like, whether that's for Bristol City or for Love. He gets ripped apart every time, and he finally decided to turn up in the one game that matters the most. Um, 
his first ever career brace, and it had to be. It was ridiculous. Then, and then, I, I say, I forget we even scored. To be honest, I, I, I'll finish off like talking about Fulham by saying that I think everyone to a man, apart from Tim Ream, because I still have like I have mini strokes every time he touches the ball because his touch is awful. Some of the touches he makes, he literally leads it about that far away from Ben Rama or Watkins. I'm like, well, that's a goal. Yeah, you know, with like Ream, he was doing a couple of dodgy passes as well in the game. Oh, yeah. What frustrated me the most, the dodgy passes always seem to be falling to Ben Rama. And instead of just offloading the ball to Watkins or Rama, he was trying skill. And it, that Brentford could have easily capitalised. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think Ream was probably Fulham's worst player. Um. Yeah, I'd say so because I'm looking. I'm looking through the lineup here. Rodak, I don't think he did much to be honest. No. I know he had one one save from Watkins about the 70th minute or something like that. Yeah. Apart from that, he was solid. Joe Bryan, night the man. Um, Hector did all right. As you know, he did very well. Adoy, brilliant. Kearney and Reed. I still not. I'm still not set on Kearney in that CDM role because no, he I'm... did very well. But I feel like next season he can't play there. I, I agree. So I think in the game when we we gave Fulham too much respect, I think um, Kenny, um, even though the pre match comments might not suggest that, um, Kenny was keeping the ball, moving it very slowly, and just sort of keeping the ball for Fulham. But but in the Premier League, you can't do that. You can't you no. can't be that like Kenny's a good player, but you can't be that slow on the ball, and you can't. Kenny needs to be the most advanced midfielder, I think, doesn't he? Really. Um, Josh Onam, I'd say he was probably overall my man of the match. I think he was brilliant, proper box to box. Um, I did predict that Kamara would start um, mm. over Knockout because I think he did bring a lot of pace down the. I think he I think he played on the left, Cabano on the right, and he did have a few pop shots at Rail, which is one of the reasons why we got up, got up the pitch so much. So I think those two are very good. Um, I can't really say much about Bobby Reed because he can't be physical against Pontus and Pinnock. But I feel like he tried to make runs in behind. I just don't think he I, think, I don't think he did much, but I think his running in behind it did help the rest of your team. Mm. You know, when, in all honesty, I know some of you, but Brentford fans were actually disappointed when we saw Mitrovic on the bench before the game because everyone knew he wasn't fully fit as well. Pinnock Pon- Pin- and Pinnock. Pontus, Pontus and Pinnock, I feel like especially a not fully fit Mitrovic would have just dealt with him. And that mm. would have given us the that would have given us the opportunity to then get on the ball and try and put our play. But because Bobby Reed was moving around so much, our defence a lot of the time was just hoofing it back to Fulham. Um so even though he didn't actually do much in terms of on the ball or anything really, I think he still I think he did his job what he needed to do for Fulham. <laughs> Oh, that's a loud noise. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I really want to wait, rate Brentford players, to be honest. I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't have to, do you? I'll give, I'll give you Norgard, Pinnock, Pontus, Raya. Because uh, um, I know Raya made the mistake, but I still think Raya made some good catches and a lot mm, of yeah, yeah, yeah. was the players that held their head up high after that game. I think Dow Scott and Rico Henry were still okay. They just didn't get forward enough. Um, I love Rico. I don't think he really sets a foot wrong too often. I think the players are disappointing me. My, was the front three did disappoint me. I know Watkins didn't really get it. It wasn't too much his fault, but the, Ben Rama and Buemo were terrible. Um, and I thought Josh De Silva and Matthias Jensen were terrible as well. Um, I think it just shows that our defensive, defensively we weren't bad. But like, we just, on the ball, we did not, we did not play the front play at all. It, it looked nothing like this, the Brentford team that I that we watched coming out of lockdown or the one at Crystal Park. Like you can't say the players didn't try; they completely tried. It's oh, just, they did. Yeah. In terms of like, because we didn't get battered or anything. It was a late free kick. It was a bit of a freak goal that separated the teams. But I feel like we did. We played that game exactly how we played the Barnsley game and the Stoke game when it came to the pressure. Which didn't play our way. That's what frustrates people the most. If we had gone out and played attacking football and like hit the post or something, but then Fulham had just got a goal, he'd have been like, yeah, fair enough. But we, the fact that Brentford didn't really create an opportunity is that's what I think frustrated fans the most. 
But um, I've moved on from it now, personally. Like, the day and the morning after, I was gutted. But I think the fact that no fans were there, we had to watch it on TV, has helped me get over it a bit more. Because it feels like yeah. a big event where I wasn't there, sort of thing. Um, but should we talk about next seasons, maybe, for both clubs before we... Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think we'll go Fulham first. No, okay, go Fulham first. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Really good ball. Uh... I feel, it feels weird saying it, but I feel like next season, well, like for the for the whole period, I can't see Scott Parker as a manager. I just can't. I think his negative football. Yes, it's, it works with Jose Mourinho, but it's Jose Mourinho. Mm-hmm. It's not Scott Parker. I feel like that you know, this negative style of getting a goal and sitting back, it's not going to work unless unless he buys. Very good defenders because if you've got all the Vireld at the back and San- Damas and Sanchez, or if you're Bernie with me and Tarkovsky, you're fine. But if you go in with Tim Ream and Michael Hector, I don't think you've got much chance at keep- keeping well, any points with that. But and I can't see him changing his ways because he didn't throughout his whole se- uh, the whole champ season and at the end of the Prem. Uh, I feel like we need to, we do need to strengthen. There are links already that we're going to get um, Branislav Ivanovic. <laughs> Here we go. And um, I but Jesus is old now. I feel like he'll be a good, a uh, good guy in the dressing room. But that's probably it. If yeah. I'm being honest, um, I haven't seen really any links to anyone else. There was a lot of fans saying that we should put in a one million pound bid for Watkins just to take the piss. I think that'd be quite funny. Um, I know we've got we've got a lot of players out on loan. We've still got Seri and Anguissa actually part of the team. So they could come back because I know Anguissa's had a really good year for Villarreal. I don't want Seri to come back. The talks we're getting Ryan Barbel back. He was he was pretty good. He was all he was pretty good when he was right. But I think oh, this, that, this sounds dangerous already. Do you know what I mean? It does, yeah. It's it's risky. It's risky. I said I'd said that um if we wanna if we wanna survive we need to buy little for big amounts instead of buying big for little amounts. If I were you, I personally, if outside better, I'd buy a centre back to go next to Hector, and like a proper good one. I don't mean like a little faff around like three million pound purchase from the French league. I mean just get a proper experienced Premier League centre half. Um, I'd probably get maybe one more midfielder, maybe just for a bit of debt. Um, yeah. Just I don't know, and I'd get a winner because personally. I know this might sound, but I don't think Abubaka Kamara and Niskin Skibano are Premier League players, in all honesty. They're not. Cavaliero and Knockout can be, but they're still very much um, have one good day in six or seven, aren't they? Sort of. Yeah, they're, most, they're the one, some of the most inconsistent players I've ever seen in the Fulham show. They are. They can be amazing, but, pro- like, but they've got all the ability. It's just they don't show up enough. But, yeah, I, th- I think that's what you need. I, Especially the centre half, because I feel like Mitrovic will nick you goals and and stuff, and a forward player will come up with something at some point. But if you can't keep clean sheets, then you're going to get relegated. Yeah. And I personally I feel, still, like... even though you, I still personally think your defence on paper is poor. I feel but... like with um, if we kept the exact same team we have now, and we sign Harrison Reed permanently, because. God knows why he hasn't signed the contract because we need him and I don't think you'll get time at Southampton even though they've sold... I'm pretty sure um, you're all set to sign him, aren't you? I'm pretty sure that's how you need uh, Yeah, nothing's, nothing's really been said about it but even though Hoiberg's left Southampton, I can't see him... I can't see Reid walking to that spot. No. I, I, feel like, I feel like he needs the he needs Fulham to get a lot of game time. I think we need him because he was brilliant. I think with the team we've got, if we didn't make any signings, which... God forbid we, God forbid we don't make any signings. We need we need players. It's gonna it's gonna be a tough one, especially with an inex like he's still an inexperienced manager. At the end of the day, yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna be tough. I don't I can't, I don't see us for like finishing bottom or anything like that because we do have players that could carry us through, probably through through a season, but we do need a lot. We do need quite a few players, and then I could say, I mean, we'll probably do a, like a longer video like later on in the year with our proper predictions. Yeah, for the Premier League. Yeah. I'd say 
maybe highest of like fifteenth, sixteenth. Yeah, and when that's your, when you're saying that's your highest, not that. Uh, yeah, that with with the squad we have, as if we like you say, if we sign a really good quality you, centre you back, can't, you can't really do these proper predictions until there's been transfer exactly. business, can you? Yeah. But, um. In in more in all honesty, I'll be if Fulham come out and makes a good business, I'll change my mind when we do a predictions video. But at the moment, and just thinking, even if you do add a couple of players, I still look at Fulham's squad and think it's just relegation fodder. Um, it might seem harsh, but I just I look at the rest of the Premier League and just don't think Fulham are up. But I I, I think there's some poor teams in the Premier League, but I still mm-hmm. don't think Fulham are up to those standards. Um, I think I, the only I, thing I, I, I think they'll, I think they'll do better than last time. Um, but just because, but last time was such a shambles. But I still think it ultimately ended in relegation. To be honest, um, I think I think the only thing that's stopping me from saying relegation is the fact that Sheffield United did it with League One players, essentially. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it'll be down to. I know it's a stupid, but it'll be down to the start, won't it? If you go yeah, into the Premier League yeah. and you lose your first four, then everyone's like, "Oh, Fulham back down again already." If you yeah, can get fans run out of it. It's about building confidence of being good enough for the Premier League, isn't it? It's, mm. And Scott Parker will need to figure out things quickly. Um, so he hasn't got much time to plan now, really. So no. um, on our hand, a bit of Championship football again next season. Lovely, just how we like it. Um, personally, I mean, everyone's talking about Watkins and Ben Rama going. They will. Um, probably going to get a combined the fees that everyone's talking about is 50 million. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, last summer we made like 35 million and reinvested like 30 or something. We won't need that much of an overhaul um, this time because we've got those players in now who are so strong in our spine, who made this season so good. I think if we lose Watkins and Ben Rama, it looks like we're going to sign Ivan Tony from Peterborough. It's not confirmed yet, but it looks like that's going to be done. Um, it's 27 goals for Peterborough last season, can't really argue. And especially playing in a team with Brentford, the great chances, I think he'll be fine. Um, and then apparently I've heard rumours of uh, Robin Hack, a German left winger from Nuremberg, um, maybe potentially being Ben Rama's replacement. But I think he, we might get him and another winger, maybe. Um, yeah. But I just think as long as we get fifty million, we're ne- I, I don't expect us to reinvest fifty million, especially if the hard financial times. Quick. We reinvest twenty, twenty million, get a, Ivan Tony in, another left winger in, and then you still have maybe like a ten million to mess around with some squad debt, maybe get another midfielder in, another defender. Um, I just, if we do get, I still think, and the league next year, personally, looks really close. But I look at teams who I think will be in the top six, the likes of Millwall, Preston, Nottingham Forest. And if I think they're the top six, I think we're so much better than them. Which makes me think, personally, it might seem, we'll have to wait until we see what business is definitely done. But I, I, I am very confident Brentford will get top two next season and get promoted. Um, might be naive, but it's just uh, the teams coming down are usually... Like, even the bookies have got us as favourites to win the league. Um, mm. The teams coming down, Bournemouth, I think they're going to have a bit of a rebuild under Jason Tindall. Um, Norwich have made some OK sign-ins. They actually have. But I just think, like, a team that was that weak and that poor in the Premier League might be a bit hurt. Yeah. Start I can't take the bounce back straight away like that. And Watford, still got a lot of their really good players. Mm. You'd expect most of them to leave. And even if they don't, they still don't even have a manager. So, I just, they ain't, there ain't much time left for planning, is there? Um, no. So, I, I think I, I am confident about next season. I'm, I'm still I'm excited about it now, but I just want us to start announcing players because you get depressed after the final. <laughs> Trust me. It's not nice yeah. being the losing side, but we're used to it. Oh, and with that, before we go, we are now officially the worst playoff team in English football history. Oh, yeah, you're, was it 0 and 9 now? Yeah, 0 and 9, whereas we were tied to 0 and 8 with Sheffield United. Um, and a little fun fact for you, Regan the person who uh, invented the playoff system was the ex Brentford chairman. So there we go. Um, that is, just says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> it all comes full circle. Yeah, it all comes full circle. Um, that's our championship player final review. Um, Fulham and our Premier League football club again. Brentford are dwelling in the football league for another seventy years. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get that. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get that at some point. Um, 
but thanks for watching remember to like the video subscribe to the youtube channel and uh We'll have some videos up this week, hopefully, if Jack gets... Underrated up. 11. Underrated 11. We should Surely. <laughs> Surely it's coming. Oh, stay tuned for that. Put the, put the bell on, innit? Put the bell on. Let the notifications read in. Uh, yeah. Sure, yeah. I don't then. think I even have notifications on. Why would I? We upload it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've uploaded it. I know when it's live. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we'll see you later. Don't go changing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.